We wanted to investigate sniffing and the patterns that form within a sniff. If we take a, a normal breath, we, we typically inhale about this amount. It's about 500 mils in a normal breath. Um, of course, when we breathe, we have a huge range of ways in which we can breathe. We may breathe very rapidly, we may breathe more slowly. Generally, sniffing is, is more impulsive. We take in air more rapidly and for a shorter time. So the sniff we've been interested in is just one of many possible sniffs, but it's quite representative of the generic sniff-like behavior. We've studied a sniff where we take in about three quarters of what we take in in a normal inhalation, but about four times more rapidly. So consider taking this in in about maybe one and a half, two seconds, versus taking this amount in in half a second. The nose has several functions. First of all, it uh, is the entrance to the airway. Um, it provides the first line of defense uh, against infection. And also, um, it's a very, very efficient um, air conditioner, which um, provides the right environment for the air to go down to the delicate structures inside of the lungs. The anatomy really differs from the other anatomy in the airway, mainly because it has erectile tissue. So this is very, very vascular tissue that changes in size. And it's mainly just lining these structures there, which are what we call the turbinates. Now these structures tend to respond to various things, like blood flow, and that's why sometimes people feel like one nostril is uh, a bit more open than the other. Here we can see the um, inferior turbinate, there we see the middle turbinate, and then more towards the, the back of the nose we have this area which we call the um, nasopharynx. Going a bit further down we have the oropharynx there, and down here we, we have um, the vocal folds and what we call the, the larynx. To begin, uh, we need to measure how much air is, is inhaled, typically, and how rapidly. So to do that, we, we rely on experimentation. We take um, a staple of air dynamics research, which is the hot wire probe, and we place this outside the face of a number of subjects, maybe 20 different individuals. Now, if you looked very closely, you'd find that it's a little uh, pronged probe. It's about um, two millimeters or a millimeter and a half between the prongs. And in between those is a very fine wire, which allows one to measure flow speed very, very rapidly. It's very accurate. But of course, there's no way you'd want to stick this down your nose. So after this point, we'd have to rely on computational methods. The first thing we need is a computational model of the nose. This is a, a surface model of an airway. At the top, we have the, uh, the nose. So we have the two nostrils here. And um, then we have the, uh, the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and the trachea and the larynx. This model comes from uh, medical imaging, so this is a realistic life-size model, so this is the real size and you can see how uh, small it is in, in sections. Um, and the way we create these is that we take a CT scan or an MRI scan of a subject and then our medical experts delineate for us on those scans which part of the image is an airway and if you stick that together for all the slices in an MRI or CT scan, you, you get a surface a bit like this. Once we have a geometry, we can take it into what we call a computational fluid dynamics software. So it's a CFD package, which is the same thing that's used in aerospace industry or Formula One. The physics is the same and the, the way the, the air behaves is the same. We're just looking inside a nose instead of on the outside of a vehicle. So this allows us to solve the equations that govern flow throughout the entire nose. Now what's special about what we've done in this simulation is how we've done that. So in order to do these simulations you have to break up the geometry that you're interested in to lots of very small little boxes and you can solve the equations within those boxes. Um, and on this geometry for every cubic millimetre within this we had about a thousand of these small elements. It's very uh, highly resolved simulation which means we can resolve very small fluctuations in the flow and get a very accurate picture of what's going on. We've also got very fine resolution in time as well. So the sniff that we looked at took half a second and we looked at it every 10 microseconds. Of course, this is very computationally expensive. So to do this on a computer that we had in the office took about four months to, to model half a second of, of real time sniffing. So what we find are three real key phases of an inhalation. At first, the air fills the whole nose throughout all the airway geometry. But very quickly it finds that it can't keep filling the nose and certain patterns form so the flow biases certain areas and most of the flow will go through certain areas of the nose. And this takes a very short amount of time, maybe 30 to 50 milliseconds depending on the geometry. 
if we take all of the divisions in this bottle, just in that little small division at the bottom, that's about 50 mils of, of, the, of air it would be. That's how long it takes the flow patterns to be established, which is remarkably short. Then we find throughout the rest of the sniff, once the flow's decided where it's going to go, it keeps going in the same, to the same places, the same regions carry the main bulk of the flow. And this lasts till almost the end of the flow when you've done your peak inhalation and then you're almost stopping breathing again. It's only till when you really almost stop breathing that the pattern changes again. And some of the swirling features of the flow that were formed early on start to dominate, become stronger as the, as the flow is decelerated. Having done this very fine simulation, we can now compare to cheaper simulations and see what the difference is. And maybe depending on what you're interested in, you don't need to do a very expensive simulation. You can do it much cheaper or much quicker. And if you can do it quicker and cheaper, you can look at a lot more geometries and start to look at pathological cases, people with various diseases, and cover a much wider range of breathing profiles and anatomies. Find the ideal sniff. <laughs> Sniffing is actually quite important because there's um, range of, of conditions that affect the, the nose, um, which is called rhinosinusitis, which is an inflammation of the structures that I mentioned earlier that um, tend to engorge inside of the nose and they um, block people's noses. Now this uh, type of disease uh, affects around 15 percent of the population worldwide and for example in countries like in the United States it's estimated that the cost of treating this is around six billion dollars every year. And the, the way that we tend to manage this is with giving the patients medications via uh, a spray inside of the nose. And it's important for us to be able to know where things go um, in, inside of the nose after uh, they've applied the medication. So that's one of the, the main reasons why this um, type of work is very, very important. It's a perfect way of actually objectively quantifying the results of an operation because you reconstruct a geometry from a patient scan and sometimes people have scans before their operations and also for various reasons after their operations. So you can actually um, do simulations similar to what Alistair did and you can have objective results of how the flow has changed. And that for us, it's, it's a tool that we don't um, have at this point in time. So it's very, very interesting for us to, to see this.